Hi, and welcome to this video series from the SAP Partner Engineering Team. My name is Julie, and in this series of videos, we're going to take a look at integration scenarios, in this case, a background check vendor. And we're looking at part two of our configuration steps. Part one of our configuration, we looked at users and roles and our job requisition template. And now we're going to take a look at the settings for the integration center, specifically for option one. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and take a look at our uh, integration template. So if we go to the admin center and we search for the integration center as part of our tools, we'll go ahead and open that up. And here we're going to pick the my integrations to build a new integration or view and edit an existing one. And then to um, you have a couple of options. There is a, an integration template, an ICD file that was included in the sample files that we downloaded earlier from the um, Success Factors Partner Ecosystem Jam site. Um, you can also the browse the catalog, which is going to actually take us out to the SAP API Business Hub. And here we can see that we have an integration template for the background check. So we can pick up that template from there as well. And if we go ahead and click on that to open it up and look at the information, we can mark as our favorite. We have our information uh, on the integration tab here, and we also have our details tab. So for example, we have a link here for the various documents. If we go ahead and click and open that, we'll see the user guide with the information about the various settings and configuration for using this particular template from the API Business Hub. So that's something to take a look at before you start to consume an API from the API Business Hub. So we go back to integration, we have our tile, and I need to actually log in to the API Business Hub. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now I can open up and it's actually downloaded the ICN ICD file for me. And of course, once we've had that downloaded, um, we can go ahead and import it into our Success Factors Integration Center. So we'll do create and import an integration definition. Then I can browse to my downloads folder where I can see the ICD file that I've just downloaded. So we'll go ahead and open that up and upload. Okay, and then the next thing I wanna do is to go ahead and configure fields. So it's going to open up in our field detail view, which is this icon here. Um, we could click on any one field and then we see the information about that field. The first icon here, we can set a field as a fixed value. So something that's not tied to an individual um, source field in the integration, like maybe it's just the customer name. We've got set an associated field. So this allows us to tie a field to a single field in the source file. Um, typically you'll be using this for most uh, option for most of your integrations. And then we've also got a calculated field, which allows you to transform some data, say to change a, a state code to um, a state code value or ID. And you also have the ability to associate an operand. So this allows you to perform additional transformations to the, the source fields. Um, if we wanted to look at the field mapping, we use this icon here and we can actually see um, how we're going to map between the source field and the destination field. And then, of course, if we have any information in here, we've got a preview mode as well. Now, we don't have any information. If we had a sample JSON file that had our destination already configured, I could import or upload that sample file here, and we'll do that in a little bit. So if we go back over to our uh, field view, we see that our sample template has some fields already in it. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a new field as well. All right, so we want to find the background check status, um, sorry, background check request order status. And then we want to go ahead and click the plus sign to insert a new element. And this is going to be a sibling element to that order status. And then if we click on our element, we want to go ahead and associate that with another field. So we have two options. We can either type in the field here. So I'm looking for the application ID. Um, but I want to find the application ID 
from the job application. So I'm going to click on this one. And then I could just do change association here. Or I could also go into my entity view. And so if I click on my entity, I'm looking at the job application background request. And I want to search for my job application and my application ID. And so then that gives me the same association that I picked up in the above. So it's the application ID associated with the application ID in the job application profile. So we can go ahead and click associate. And so now I have my association. And let's go ahead and give our element a name or a proper label. We'll call it job application ID. And we see our uh, association here with the application ID in the job application. Next, we'll want to go ahead and set up our uh, destination settings. So let's go ahead and put in our sample um, server for our receiving our REST API. And I'll put in my login credentials here. And click Next. And we're not going to schedule for now, so let's just click Next. And here we see our integration flow that we've set up. Now we can choose Run Now but it'll prompt us because we haven't saved it yet. So let's go ahead and do a save. And then we can do our run now. And we see it's successful. And the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to go ahead and set up our recruiting vendor um, for our background check. So let's quickly go and set up our uh, recruiting vendor. So we're going to go into the manage data area. We're going to uh, set up a vendor. We want the recruiting external vendor. We'll choose create new recruiting external vendor. And the external code, we'll call it a mythical vendor. And the vendor name, we can use, use mythical again. And this is for the background check, so we'll go ahead and save. And one more thing we want to check on our recruiting vendor. So let's go back and pull up our vendor. And this time we want to do the integration mapping. So we're going to go ahead and choose that. And then our selection, we should see our vendor that we just created. And then for create new, we're going to do the vendor mapping again. So type in vendor to make a shorter list. And we can do recruiting mapping. And here where I use our external code of mythical. We'll connect it to our vendor. And we'll use our option one um, integration that we set up. And we can set as default yes. And set our time period to an hour is fine. And we'll go ahead and save that. And then our last piece is just to go ahead and test this. So if we go back into our recruiting module and open up a job requisition, and then we can choose to see our list of candidates. And we see here that we have three candidates that are ready for the background check. So if I just open up and look at that, I can take action, I can actually initiate a background check. So remember in our option one, the background check order is initiated by the recruiter um, as a one-off basis. So that's the setup for option one, which is the recruiter choosing from the UI. In our next video, we'll take a look at continuing to do the setup to include option two, which is the event triggered order for the background check.